The problem with a lot of lists of ways to make money online or online jobs is that they include a lot of things that while yes, technically could make you money, they couldn't make you very much money or they'd be very unpredictable. I'm thinking about things like making money with surveys or with certain apps. You're never gonna be able to make very much. Your hourly rate on those is gonna be really low. Or things like online courses or memberships. Now, personally, I love those things. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But the fact of the matter is that making money with online courses takes a little bit of time to build up and it's less predictable than if you actually have a job. So in today's video, I want to share with you five different online jobs that earn really predictable revenue and have great hourly rates. These are jobs that you can easily get hired for within just the next few weeks. And as soon as you start working, you're going to start earning money. Furthermore, each of these jobs has a lot of opportunity for advancement, career advancement. You can easily promote yourself or get promoted with each of these jobs to earn a whole lot more per hour. And so we're also going to look at some of those career advancement opportunities and how exactly you could get those promotions. Online gig number one is a virtual assistant. You've probably heard of this one. A virtual assistant is just someone who does basic admin work for an online business. So they might be doing things like answering emails or making small website updates, creating content. They're kind of the jack of all trades when it comes to online business support person. These days, virtual assistant rates start at about $20 USD with your average virtual assistant earning about $30 per hour. If you want to advance your career as a virtual assistant, you have a few different options. One of them, I'll call this level two, is to become a tech VA. And so this is a virtual assistant who specializes in technical work. For example, they might choose to specialize in email marketing software. And so they have more advanced knowledge there, so they're able to charge a higher rate. Or you might choose to specialize in website updates and website maintenance. And you can also charge higher rates for that. If you are a more specialized tech VA, you you can expect to earn anywhere between about $35 to $60 per hour. And then one final way you can upgrade your career as a virtual assistant, I'll call this level three, is to become an online business manager. So an online business manager, also sometimes called an OBM, is someone who is in a more managerial role in an online business. They are overseeing projects, they're making sure that things happen on time, they're helping to manage the team of people who are working in the business, they might be corresponding with contractors or other management things like that. So in this management role, you can expect to earn anywhere between about $40 to $100 an hour. And something that's cool about the online business manager opportunity is that most online business managers sell a package for their service. So they're essentially on salary. So for example, I have an online business manager who works for me. Her name is Courtney and I pay her a monthly salary for her to do about 20 hours per week of work for me. However, she doesn't have to do 20 hours per week. She just has to get the job done well. And so if she works faster, then she can work less. Or if she figures out ways to delegate tasks or to streamline things, she can work less and still earn the same amount of money. So if you work smart as an OBM, you have the potential to have a great monthly income because you'll be able to handle a few clients at one time. Job number two is marketing assistant. Now this also could be considered another level of being a virtual assistant because really it's just a more specialized type of virtual assistant. But here as a marketing assistant, you will focus on helping an online business with their digital marketing. So this could involve writing content for social media or scheduling posts on social media, creating content for ads, managing paid ads, managing sponsorships, or anything related to creating and managing content. As a more specialized virtual assistant, you can expect to earn somewhere between about $25 to $50 per hour as a marketing assistant. But if you want to step things up and earn a little bit more, then you could become a social media manager. So this is the next level of being a marketing assistant. Now you're managing at least one social media channel. You'll be responsible for planning and scheduling all the content on that platform, making sure that it gets published at the right time. You 
might also be creating it or you might be overseeing people who create it. Now you're in more of that management type role and you'll be earning a bit more. Your average social media manager can expect to earn in the range of about $40 to $65 per hour these days. Now, before I get to the level three version of being a marketing assistant, I wanna take just a moment to talk about the fact that the rates that I'm talking about for these jobs might seem a little unrealistic to you. They might seem higher than you would expect. And I wanna talk about exactly why that is, because this is not just me being optimistic or trying to paint a cheery picture of these different positions. These are the real rates that I pay people to do these jobs for me, and my online business peers are paying as well. Now, the reason that these rates might seem a bit high to you is because you might be thinking of the rates that a normal W-2 type employee would earn for these different jobs. But that's not quite what I'm talking about here. When I say online gigs, I'm talking about jobs where you can work for yourself, you can be an independent contractor or a sole proprietor or a freelancer. And when you're working for yourself, you typically earn more per hour. And that's because when you're working for yourself, you face some additional expenses. And the person who is hiring you faces lower expenses, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, so they're willing to pay a slightly higher hourly rate, and you need to charge a slightly higher hourly rate for this to all make sense. So I'm talking about expenses like taxes. The government makes employers pay half of their employees employment taxes to spread out the pain and reduce public outcry. But when you work for yourself, there's no one to share the burden of those taxes with, and so you bear the brunt of paying the full amount yourself. Aside from taxes, when you work for yourself, you also have to pay for all of the related business expenses that are required for you to be able to do your job. So for example, if you're a W-2 employee, then your employer will probably provide you with an office, a desk, a chair, probably a computer, pens, pencils, sticky notes, all of those different things that you need to be able to do your job. But when you work for yourself, you have to pay for all of those things. I had to pay for my camera and my computer keyboard and my computer and my desk and my office and just literally everything. So those things all get deducted from your business's revenue. How you figure out how much you're actually earning or your take home pay is you take your gross revenue, that is everything that clients paid you, then you subtract all your expenses and then you have your taxable income, then the government takes their cut and then you have your take home pay. For example, if my business earned $80,000 in a year in gross revenue, I would then subtract all my expenses. You know, if I bought a desk, if I bought a chair, if I bought a computer, if I paid an online business manager or a virtual assistant, let's say all those expenses in a year added up to $20,000. So I'd subtract that. Now I'm at $60,000. That is my net profit. Then the government takes their cut. At that income bracket, it would be around 25%. So I'd be left with $45,000 as my take home income, which as you can see in this example, ended up being around half of the gross revenue. And all that is why these rates are so much higher than you might expect. Independent contractors typically earn higher hourly rates to cover all of these expenses so that they are left with a reasonable income at the end of the day. Now, I think that that's really important to understand going into working for yourself so that you don't later on face some sticker shock and be unprepared for those expenses and those taxes. But it's also really important that you have tools to help you out with dealing with these bills. And that is one of the reasons why I am so thankful for the sponsor of today's video, which is Melio. Melio is a really easy to use platform for paying your business bills online. I've been using it ever since I first heard about it about a year ago because it makes paying my business bills so easy. They have options for paying your bills completely for free with a free account and no transaction fees or anything. I'll talk more about that in a moment. They have options to pay your bills instantly so whoever you're paying doesn't have to wait to get the payment and the person you're paying this is really the kicker the person you're paying does not have to have a Melio account you don't have to work with the person you're paying and try to get them to set up a Melio account or anything like that you just have your own free Melio account you send the payments out of there and they land directly in your payee's bank accounts or Melio can even send them a check for a small fee Melio also now connects with QuickBooks and Xero so that you can sync up your bills from your book bookkeeping software to your bill pay software. And if you sync up Melio with your bookkeeping software like that, then Melio will mail your first five checks for you for free every month, in addition to the unlimited ACH transactions. 
To give Melio a try and see how easy to use it is and how much time it will save you in paying your business bills, just go to gillianperkins.com slash Melio to create your free account. It will take you just a couple of minutes to set up. And once you have it set up, I would say that on average, I spend less than one minute paying each of my business bills. So again, give it a try right now at gillianperkins.com slash Melio. All right, so now let's talk about the third promotion level. If you started out as a marketing assistant, you can upgrade your career to becoming a marketing manager. So in this role, you would oversee all of the marketing for a given business. You'd be overseeing their social media channels, you'd be overseeing their paid advertising, their sponsorships. At that point, you're not going to probably be creating any of the content yourself. You're going to be delegating tasks. And so this is a job that would be perfect for you if you are marketing savvy and you also are highly organized. As a marketing manager, manager, you could expect to earn $50 to $100 per hour. Online gig number three is a video editor. This is another pretty common one that you've probably heard of, but there is still so much space in this market. There is a ton of demand for video editors these days with so many online businesses and individuals creating video content either just for YouTube for fun or to market their businesses. And they need good video editors. There are tons of video editors out there, but many of them aren't very skilled. So if you are willing to put in a little bit of time to learn how to edit videos well, then you can easily find some clients and get those clients to stick with you long term. As a beginner video editor, you can start at $15 to $20 an hour, but as soon as you are a bit more skilled and as you find more and more clients, you can expect to be earning more like $30 to $45 per hour. If you want to take your career as a video editor to the next level, then you can choose to specialize further. One way you could do this would be to become a YouTube shorts editor. Now, shorts can seem simple at first, however, if you watch my recent interview with wildly successful YouTube Shorts creator Jenny Hoyos, then you know how much goes into editing those shorts. In that video, she talked about how many different editors she had to try before she found someone who could really do the job. And you better believe that when she's getting a billion views on her shorts, she is willing to pay a little bit to have her shorts be as awesome as possible. As a YouTube Shorts editor, you would get paid per video. And so the faster you're able to churn out those high quality shorts, the more you'd be able to earn. Shorts editors charge anywhere from about $50 per short video up to about $200 per short video. Again, just depending on their skill level. And then you could take your video editing career up to an even higher level by becoming an expert at motion graphic design. Now, motion graphics have come a long way over the past couple of years, and they are easier to create today than ever before. But there still is quite a lot of expert knowledge and time that goes into creating the most advanced motion graphics. And so if you love video editing, but you want to specialize even further, then you could look at this career option that generally is going to be earning you somewhere between $40 to $100 per hour. Online gig number four is podcast editor. So a podcast editor is kind of similar to a video editor, but of course they're only working with the audio. I would say that simple podcast editing is a bit simpler than simple video editing because for most podcasts, the host just wants the mistakes cut out and an intro and an outro added to their podcast episode. This is a skill set that you can learn in a matter of just a few weeks. However, if you take your skills up a level and you learn how to not only cut out mistakes from the audio, but actually engineer the audio, then you get to level two of this job, which is audio engineer. Now, not only are you cutting out those mistakes, but you are improving the quality of the audio audio. So you might be cutting out background noises, hums, distracting clicks, mouth noises, that sort of thing, as well as improving the overall tone of the audio. As an audio engineer, you can expect to earn somewhere between about $30 to $50 per hour. And then for an even higher level of this podcast editor career trajectory, you could become a podcast manager. So a podcast manager can work on their own or they can run a podcast management agency. As a podcast manager, you would get the podcast edited 
This could be something you do yourself, or you could delegate it to a podcast editor. You would be managing the show overall, making sure that there are episodes scheduled for each of the upcoming dates. You would be uploading those episodes to the podcast hosting service, and you'd be either writing the show notes for each episode or delegating that to a writer. You also might help the podcast host with managing and scheduling their guests. Most podcast managers charge either per episode or a flat monthly rate. I've seen rates in the realm of one to $300 per episode or $1,000 to $4,000 per month. Now, something that's cool about this opportunity is that if you do all of the work yourself, meaning you are editing the podcast episodes, you are writing the show notes, then you can earn a pretty good hourly rate because generally to manage one show, you're looking at about 15 to 20 hours of work work per month. So you can earn about $2,000 per month for about 20 hours of work per month. So about $100 an hour. Or if you want to focus more on the management side of things and have a team of people under you who are actually doing the editing, doing the writing, even managing the guests, then you can do a lot less of the work and take on a lot more clients. You'll earn less per client, but it's a much more scalable business model. And finally, online gig number five is customer support assistant. Now this is a job that pretty much anyone can do if you have basic communication skills and you can get things done by a deadline. Basically, all you need to do is answer emails for your clients. So you'll log into their email account and you'll answer their emails. Now, of course, this comes with learning how to answer their emails, but that isn't really a specialized skill set because you're going to learn that for each individual client that you take on. You'll learn their business, you'll learn the answers to the questions, you'll learn how their programs or products work, and then you'll have that knowledge to be able to share with their customers. As a customer service assistant, you can expect to earn anywhere between about $15 to $30 per hour these days, which is a fine starting place, but you can upgrade from there. These days, many online business owners who sell courses or other educational products are hiring success coaches to work inside of their programs and help their clients and customers even more. Now, they call these success coaches different things, but the basic idea is the same. The coach is working with the students who are enrolled in the programs, is giving them accountability, is helping to answer their questions, maybe is reviewing material that the students create. As a success coach, you can expect to earn anywhere between about $30 an hour up to about $75 an hour. And that's a pretty big range. It really depends on the exact program that you are being a coach in. If it is a smaller, cheaper program, then they won't be paying the coaches as much. However, if it's a higher end program, then they'll be paying the coaches a bit more and you'll be providing a higher level of service to those customers. And then a way you can potentially advance your career in customer service even further is to become a program manager. So this is someone who instead of working individually with one customer at a time, is overseeing essentially the student body as a whole. So if a business has a course or a membership or some sort of coaching program, they need someone to oversee the program. Now this job could be more focused on the students themselves, making sure that the students are happy, communicating with them, talking with them in the community, those sorts of things. Or it could be more focused on the curriculum where you are managing the curriculum, potentially creating new lessons for the curriculum, uploading them, managing the website, those sorts of things or it could be a combination of the two. As an online program manager, you could expect to earn anywhere between about 40 up to $100 per hour. All of the gigs we talked about today are essentially jobs. You are trading your time for money, right? You're earning an hourly rate. And at the beginning, that's great because that means you're getting compensated for every hour you work. But long-term, that's kind of not so great because it means you have to keep giving your hours to keep earning the dollars. Online courses, on the other hand, are a way to earn semi-passive income. You do some work upfront that you don't get paid for, but then once you've done the work, you've created something, you've created a course, you've created a marketing system that is going to continue to earn you money month after month, whether you're working or not. And that's what I love about this and why I wanted to do this from day one. I didn't want to have to show up at the office and work with customers or clients every single day, every single week. I wanted to be able to do a whole bunch of work when I felt like 
doing it when I was inspired, and then take time off to go on a vacation or just to spend more time with my family. If you're curious about how this whole online course thing works and how I actually sell the online courses, then I would love to share a free training with you that I put together a few weeks ago. It is a deep dive into my sales funnel process. So basically I recorded a screen share video walking through the back end of every step of my sales funnel that sells my online course. In the videos, you'll see exactly how I get leads. You'll see the webinar that I use and how it's set up. I even walk you through step-by-step step my webinar framework of like how I actually sell in the webinar. You'll see the exact emails I send to sell the course. And with those also, I break them down one by one so you can see exactly what the emails are, when I send them and all of that. So if you've ever been curious about how exactly I sell my online courses and you wanna see behind the scenes, then this training is for you. You can get it completely for free at gillianperkins.com slash breakdown. I'll include the link below in the video description that they are making harder and harder to find. Or again, you can find it at gillianperkins.com slash breakdown. Now, as I mentioned, all of the jobs I was talking about in today's video are freelance jobs. So in order to get these jobs, what you need to do is you need to market yourself and get clients. Now, if you wanna learn more about exactly how to do that, then check out this video right here where I break down a step-by-step -step process for marketing yourself and attracting clients as a freelancer.